Welcome back to season two of the podcast. Different name, same concept. I've got things to say about everything. This season, we're doubling down on the mental health content, continuing to ponder the randomness of life and trying to keep some laughs sprinkled in between. You can keep up with me on Instagram and threads at Pat Pontificates and subscribe to the weekly newsletter at patpontificates.com. All links are provided in the show notes. I'm your host, Patrice, preaching authenticity, wellness, and freedom to the masses. Let's disrupt. We didn't need a video to know Diddy did it. And what I'm concerned about is the general public's obsession with seeing brutalization on film to start having serious conversations. So this is a serious conversation that I want to have regarding, you know, what people are actually doing when they share um, traumatic content, when they share about other people's, you know, stories that are just bad stories that have happened to them, what people are actually doing when they are consuming someone else's bad day, bad life. Um, bad moments, dark times, and what that is actually doing for the people who are consuming that content. Now, I'm not necessarily blaming whatever, whoever, what entity is involved in the video being shared. I think, unfortunately, because of the society that we are a part of, it is step one in a long, in many steps that it will take to get Diddy up out of here period um but it's about the way we consume that information similar to how i was talking about the quote-unquote rat beef which at this point i'm not convinced it was just simply a rat beef it was not just another riff in hip-hop it was definitely a moment that was supposed to cause some things to happen right and when we start making um light of situations or monetizing situations that were really harmful and um, traumatic for a lot of people involved, including people who are not even a part of the situation and will consume said content. There's a lot of um, conversations we need to freaking have about why people are so entertained I've noticed there's a lot of things that are complicating um, my perception of what's going on here. There's the people who know that showing a video of a woman getting stomped out in a hallway by somebody that we all know and has notoriety is going to get them views and monetization and um, they'll get a check at the end of it. And that rage baiting is lucrative. And unfortunately, that's what social media has turned into. Whatever we can plaster on the algorithm that will get us the highest amount of views, the highest amount of engagement, even if the engagement is negative, is what will get us the highest payout. Unfortunately, when it comes to things like abuse and people being brutalized like it it then has me questioning your moral ground when that's what you use to beef up your numbers so that your payout at the end of the month from tiktok twitter instagram and whoever can be high um but i noticed this is also something that happens without monetization this is something that people are encouraged to do just for the sake of clout just for the sake of having people comment, just for the sake of being the first one to break the news story, much in the way that TMZ does. But again, there's as much more tied to monetization and, and all that. But just being the one with the T, the scoop. And I've watched the difference in people that I follow or just see often on TikTok and how they talked about the situation, whether they just talked about it without the video whether they gave you a trigger warning before the video or if they gave you a screenshot of the video 
or if the screenshot had um, an attack in motion in the screenshot, or if you just scroll the timeline and the attack was just boom right there in progress as you were scrolling your TikTok timeline. It's this thing where people seem to enjoy plastering other people's suffering, other people's low moments, other people's trauma, brutalization, just for the sake of what they want in that moment. And I'm here to tell you that those people are also part of the problem. Not the problem in terms of Diddy, but also kind of, yeah. Because how many of those people that you think have no problem showing that girl getting abused without warning and without thinking about what that might do to somebody viewing that content, how many of those people do you think would be part of the system, part of the moment that perpetuates that violence? How many of them might be enacting that violence how many of them might excuse that violence how many of them might be um just the number one poster child for the bystander effect and see that violence happening and never intervene so i think it's very interesting that um We can see something like that happening and think it's just content to throw on a timeline feed and think that's just, you know, the topic for the day. Luckily for me, a friend of mine sent me a text message. It just so happened that that day I got caught up watching drug dealer documentaries. And so I hadn't opened any of my social media apps for like two, three hours um and I was doing work and stuff like that so my friend had texted me and was like hey there's a video going around of Diddy um the video that was referenced in the lawsuit yeah it got dropped so mind your timeline and I was extremely grateful for that because as someone who is dealing with PTSD scrolling down the timeline and seeing that play would have sent me to a very dark place So every time I seen just the screenshot of it, I was able to scroll past that very quickly. But had I not gotten that warning, there were some videos where it was just the screenshot. There were other videos where you could hear him like yelling. There were other videos where you could see it happening all in real time. And even with me being so cautious to make sure that I did not see anything actually happen in that video, I went to bed that night and in the first, I want to say 10 to 15 minutes of me falling asleep, I woke up out of my sleep in a fucking panic and had, I don't want to call it a nightmare. It, I just had like a PTSD like reaction, but I was definitely kind of dreaming. Maybe it wasn't 15 minutes because I don't know how long it takes you to dream. I'm not that deep of a, in psychology, but long story short i had a dream that i was being fucking attacked in my sleep that night and this is why y'all have to be so fucking for real about playing fast and loose with trauma on the timeline and it's not because y'all have never experienced trauma it's not because people have never seen these things happen people have either become so desensitized people have um tried to like just throw it away that they've experienced or seen things such as just as wicked in their daily lives that they have just participated in this violence that allows them to feel like it's just normal part of life. And I'm I'm here to tell you that even if it has been, it should not be. And it's not something that you should actively participate in making a part of your day-to-day, let alone someone else's day-to-day. And this is why trigger warnings are important. And this is why responsibility with the things that you put out and how other people might receive you is important. And this is why verbiage on, I don't owe anyone anything and everybody, how you receive me is not, that stuff is a cop out for you to walk through the world recklessly and not think about how you affect other people. Because it should not be that I should be able to post whatever I want 
I should be able to post somebody getting stomped out in a hallway because what my numbers will go up I'll get monetized people should know about this and you they will know about this anyway we knew about this already the court documents and the lawsuit that Cassie filed had all this information the same court documents that had tr- a trigger warning on it let's be for real and so my issue my the conversation that I want to continue having is about how I'm realizing that people consume other people's pain there's many reasons but my theory that I'm going with today for the sake of this episode is in order to feel better about their own and I'm gonna tell you that is a very um wicked way to live I want to find a better word for that but I don't have one at this moment the adjectives have escaped me but it's not it doesn't serve you in the long run I've noticed there's a lot of things that are complicating um, my perception of what's going on here. There's the people who know that showing a video of a woman getting stomped out in a hallway by somebody that we all know and has notoriety is going to get them views and monetization and um, they'll get a check at the end of it. And that rage baiting is lucrative. And unfortunately, that's what social media has turned into. Whatever we can plaster on the algorithm that will get us the highest amount of views, the highest amount of engagement, even if the engagement is negative, is what will get us the highest payout. Unfortunately, when it comes to things like abuse and people being brutalized like it it then has me questioning your moral ground when that's what you use to beef up your numbers so that your payout at the end of the month from tiktok twitter instagram and whoever can be high um but i noticed this is also something that happens without monetization this is something that people are encouraged to do just for the sake of clout just for the sake of having people comment just for the sake of being the first one to break the news story much in the way that tmz does but again there's as much more tied to monetization and and all that but just being the one with the tea the scoop and i've watched the difference in people that i follow or just see often on tiktok and how they talked about the situation whether they just talked about it without the video whether they gave you a trigger warning before the video or if they gave you a screenshot of the video or if the screenshot had um, an attack in motion in the screenshot or if you just scrolled the timeline and the attack was just boom right there in progress as you were scrolling your TikTok timeline. It's this thing where people seem to enjoy plastering other people's suffering other people's low moments other people's trauma brutalization just for the sake of what they want in that moment and I'm here to tell you that those people are also part of the problem not the problem in terms of Diddy but also kind of yeah because how many of those people that you think have no problem showing that girl getting abused without warning and without thinking about what that might do to somebody viewing that content how many of those people do you think would be part of the system part of the moment that perpetuates that violence how many of them might be enacting that violence how many of them might excuse that violence how many of them might be um just the number one poster child for the bystander effect and see that violence happening and never intervene. So I think it's very interesting that um, we can see something like that happening and think it's just content to throw 
on a timeline feed and think that's just, you know, the topic for the day. Luckily for me, a friend of mine sent me a text message. It just so happened that that day I got caught up watching drug dealer documentaries. And so I hadn't opened any of my social media apps for like two, three hours. Um, and I was doing work and stuff like that. So my friend had texted me and was like, Hey, there's a video going around of Diddy. Um, the video that was referenced in the lawsuit. Yeah, it got dropped. So mind your timeline. And I was extremely grateful for that because as someone who is dealing with PTSD, scrolling down the timeline and seeing that play would have sent me to a very dark place. So every time I seen just the screenshot of it, I was able to scroll past that very quickly. But had I not gotten that warning, there were some videos where it was just the screenshot. There were other videos where you could hear him like yelling. There were other videos where you could see it happening all in real time. And even with me being so cautious to make sure that I did not see anything actually happen in that video, I went to bed that night and in the first, I want to say 10 to 15 minutes of me falling asleep, I woke up out of my sleep in a fucking panic and had, I don't want to call it a nightmare. It, I just had like a PTSD like reaction, but I was definitely kind of dreaming. Maybe it wasn't 15 minutes because I don't know how long it takes you to dream. I'm not that deep of a, in psychology, but long story short i had a dream that i was being fucking attacked in my sleep that night and this is why y'all have to be so fucking for real about playing fast and loose with trauma on the timeline and it's not because y'all have never experienced trauma it's not because people have never seen these things happen people have either become so desensitized people have um tried to like just throw it away that they've experienced or seen things such as just as wicked in their daily lives that they have just participated in this violence that allows them to feel like it's just normal part of life. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that even if it has been, it should not be. And it's not something that you should actively participate in making a part of your day-to-day, -day, let alone someone else's day-to-day. -day. And this is why trigger warnings are important. And this is why responsibility with the things that you put out and how other people might receive you is important. And this is why verbiage on, I don't owe anyone anything and everybody, how you receive me is not, that stuff is a cop out for you to walk through the world recklessly and not think about how you affect other people. Because it should not be that I should be able to post whatever I want. I should be able to post somebody getting stomped out in a hallway because what my numbers will go up i'll get monetized people should know about this and you they will know about this anyway we knew about this already the court documents in the lawsuit that cassie filed had all this information the same court documents that had tr a trigger warning on it Let's be for real. And so my issue, my the conversation that I want to continue having is about how I'm realizing that people consume other people's pain. There's many reasons, but my theory that I'm going with today for the sake of this episode is in order to feel better about their own and I'm gonna tell you that is a very um wicked way to live I want to find a better word for that but it, I don't have one at this moment the adjectives have escaped me but it's not it doesn't serve you in the long run One thing that has been a dead giveaway for me, um, for people that 
I cannot engage in conversations about people who have experienced things that are just unpleasant or like just seriously traumatic or otherwise is when I start to realize that their opinions of those people at, you know, as people cloud their ability to empathize or to look at the situation appropriately just because they have opinions on those people as people right and so again Megan the Stallion is a great it's a great um example of that um I've had a conversation conversation with someone who like hate make the stallion you ask there's no reason oh I just hate her music I just think she's this think she's that and like sometimes people could you know have their opinions it's fine but I'm gonna ask you why if you cannot tell me why you gotta go because people who are haters it's one thing to like let me say something Kendrick said I hate this I hate that I hate this I hate that and also, these are the other reasons why I hate you. Because you be doing this and you be doing that. And this is why. And when you did that, that was whack. Listen, I have no further questions. But when people, and there's a separate conversation I want to have about women. But I don't want to do this here. <laughs> when you do that, and that clouds your ability to have empathy for somebody. Just because you have a personal personal feeling about them which usually is about you being triggered about how they are in comparison to yourself personally I can't have a conversation with you and those are the people that are you should not trust with speaking about someone's trauma as a celebrity as a regular person as yourself as anybody because if that person decided tomorrow that they don't like you guess who they gonna do that same thing to our ability to empathize should not or sympathize should not be clouded by um our judgment of a personality traits and there are also some people who have not done the greatest things have not done the best things but i also think we can say that they don't deserve to be brutalized in the hallway of a hotel and feel like they were being tortured for several years of their lives this is not me suggesting i don't pay attention to other things suggesting that uh, Cassie was doing this, that, and the third. I actually really don't care. This is one of those cases, rare cases for me, where I actually don't care um, for a number of reasons. I can also say, I can say regardless that Cassie did not deserve anything that she was put through by Diddy. And if you cannot say that, I cannot trust you as a person. If you can throw up on your page, if you can throw up on the internet someone's brutality because you know that it'll get you views. So you put up a one minute video of someone being brutalized for views that you could point over and gasp and make faces for views. I do not trust you because when it's me, if, if it's me, you will do the same thing. And I think that's what we got to start understanding, that they will do the same thing to you. People will do the same thing to you. And that's why it's never really good to just rejoice in other people's misfortune. Because <laughs> when it's time for us to require sympathy, when it's time for us to require help, we will realize we can't go to nobody because the friends who were laughing about DV, the friends who were laughing about suicidal ideation, the friends who are laughing about self-harm, who are laughing about homelessness, who are laughing about this, laughing about Gaza, laughing, 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 fucking laughing, cannot help us, will not help us. Or at the very least, we don't even feel safe to ask those people for help. And at some point we will need to really think about those times we enabled those people to laugh at other people and now we have then alienated ourselves from being able to receive help that we need because we have enabled them to make us into somebody who is not worthy of help trauma is not entertainment
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Disrupting Silence podcast. In the show notes, you'll find a link to join the weekly insider newsletter community for like-minded disruptors, people pondering their purpose, and recovering perfectionists. You can also follow me on Instagram and threads at Pat Pontificates. Links are also in the show notes. If you have a listener question or just want to connect with me directly about something, send me an email at hello at patpontificates.com. Until next time.